problem, we're going from pounds to ounces. And every pound has 16 ounces. This is called a unit rate. The reason it's called a unit rate is because it gives us a relationship in terms of one unit or one pound. So we know every one pound gives us 16 ounces. So that we know that Ellen buys 24 ounces of green beans at the grocery store. The green beans cost $1.90 per pound. So we have a second, a second ratio to think about, which is that every one pound cost $1.90. How much does she pay for the green beans before tax? So in other words, um, if she buys 24 ounces, how much does she spend? Well, let's combine these two ratios. One pound is the same thing as 16 ounces, and we said that every one pound costs us a dollar and ninety, and that just means that well then every 16 ounces also costs us a dollar ninety. So we want to know what would happen if we had 24 ounces. And I feel like a, a nice way of simplifying this problem is to write a proportion with two fractions. Because these ratios, I'm, I'm just feeling like here I have a little bit too much and I'm confusing myself. So let's rewrite it one other way. We're sticking with ounces, so every 16 ounces cost $1.90. And this is just one way to write the report proportion. I could write the reciprocal, I could reverse this. But I'm going to stick with this. Well, we know, we know that she's taking 24 ounces. But what we don't know is how much that costs. So we're finding this missing number. And one way to solve that is to look across and say, well, 16 times what gives me 24? And to figure that out, I would take 24 and divide it by 16. And you might recognize that, well, 16 goes into 24 once, and there's 8 left over. So it's 1 and a half, right? Um, 16 goes into 24 one and a half times. I believe that's correct. Let me just double check. 24 divided by 16. Yep. So that means that to get from 16 to 24, I take 16 and multiply it by 1.5. Now, since the, the price is per ounce, we want to scale up the dollars by the same amount. So we want to multiply that by the same number, which is 1.5. So 1.9 or $1.90 times 1.5 will give us x. Because this, this fraction here is the same thing as this fraction, but we're scaling it up. We're rewriting it in a different way. So we don't want to change anything here. So we multiply both parts by the same number. And when I multiply 1.9 times 1.5, x is equal to 2.85. In other words, the cost it's going to be $2.85. And, I mean, look at these choices for a moment. F doesn't work because, well, $1.90, that was the cost of, of 16 ounces, and she's buying more than that, so it should be more expensive. So right there, you can eliminate one choice. Um, another way to solve here, uh, we can look up and down. We can say, well, $1.90, how does that compare to 16? It's, it's smaller than it, but how many times smaller? Well, I could say 16 divided by $1.90 is, uh, it's not a very friendly number, but it's 8.42105. I'll leave it at that. So that means that this number times 8.42105 has to equal 24. So if I want to solve it another way, I could take 24 and divide it by this number to get x, right? Because x is, x is smaller than 24. So 24 divided by that number is still 2.85. And that relationship, we can look up and down or across. I, I found, though, looking across from numerator to numerator was easier for me in this problem. All right, hope that helped.